We're continuing our devotional discussions with Dr. Walt Laramore. Uh, we were talking the last two days about the physical health, and I, I want us to move into the mental and emotional realm of health and how that affects our lives and, and how we can become better people, uh, more Christ-like. We can become uh, more productive through uh, having and developing mental and emotional health. Uh, Walt, uh, let's talk about that a little bit because we were talking about physical health and exercising and eating, but, but a lot of lack of exercise or eating binges come mm -hmm. from a mental or emotional state. So uh, what, what is the correlation between health mm -hmm. and mental emotional health, physical health and the mental and emotional? This connection is absolutely dramatic. The two are intricately tied together. And as we've done surveys over the last 10 years of, of looking at the 10 essentials of, of highly healthy people, we found three areas of emotional health that are potentially problematic. Sadness, anger, gratitude. In sadness, uh, think of the acrostic SAD, stress, anxiety, and depression. Mm -hmm. Those can be crippling to our emotional and our physical health. And so we've built mm -hmm. into our assessment tool a measure that helps people see is the stress they're under, the anxiety that they have, the mood changes they have, is that something that's crippling you? You, you may not know it without measuring it. When it comes to the area of, of, of gratitude, uh, so many of us aren't grateful for what blessings we have. Sammy did a wonderful study up at Michigan. They broke volunteers into three groups. One group they said at the end of the day, just write down five things that you're angry about, that irritated you, that, that mm -hmm. aggravated you, and then spend three minutes thinking about it. They called that group the grumbling group. And they took the third, uh, another third of the volunteers and they said, we want you to gloat. Well, the way they said that was, think about five ways you're better off than people you work with or people in your neighborhood and then spend three minutes thinking about that. That was the gloating group. And the last group they said, at the end of the day, just write down five things that blessed you, five things you're grateful for and spend three minutes thinking about that. They followed those people over three years. Their emotional and physical health began to change within three weeks. Wow. And the only wow. group that became healthy was the gratitude group. Mm. Learning to be grateful as opposed to gloating or grumbling. And last but not least is that anger and unforgiveness. Those of us who choose to carry the burden of anger, of unforgiveness for stuff that's been wrong, done wrong to us, even things unjustly done wrong. If we do not learn how to let that go, how to forgive it, it will cripple us not only emotionally but physically for life. I, I know that ties so closely. Of course, the, the core of the gospel is in the forgiveness that Christ brings. But there are a lot of Christians who are struggling with this. Oh, absolutely. So, so what do you do as a Christian or, or as a non-Christian? How do you deal with the forgiveness and letting it go? You know, one principle that helps my patients, I tell them, if you choose not to forgive someone, now they may not deserve it, but if you choose not to forgive them, to hold on to that anger, is like drinking dilute cyanide, mm. trying to hurt mm. the other person. You don't hurt them. Yeah. You only eat out your own insights, your own heart. The divine design is, as we begin to forgive, God begins the process of healing us. Mm -hmm. We can choose to forgive or not to forgive. We can't undo what's wrong, right. but we can make that choice. I want us to go a little further into this tomorrow as we talk about this and also uh, going back to how we can make some real changes in our mm. attitude tomorrow. Thank you so much, Walt, and uh, we'll look forward to tomorrow in our devotional time with you again.